This video is to explain to you how to use your water storage in case you have a power outage where if you're on city water or if you have a well pump that isn't running, how to use your water efficiently. So these are my favorite water containers. They're five gallons. And the ones that I get are the camping ones that have the little nozzle here that's a spigot that you just turn. This is the one that I had up in my kitchen, so it's the one I'm going to show you. So this water is meant to last you for however long it is you've decided you need to keep this water storage. It's going to taste funny because it's been in the storage container for however long and when you put it in you had a little bit of chlorine that you put in with it so it's going to taste bad. Um, the way that you work with that is that anything that you're going to drink out of that you're going to boil it first. I just like to make um, herbal teas for my family when we have to drink this water and that's what we drink so that it tastes good and it also boils the chlorine out. Um, you don't want to use very much of this for washing. When it comes to hygiene, this is what you'll do. You'll fill a bowl, or this is even better, a tub in your sink. You'll fill it about one third full of water. Then you'll add uh, maybe a, an eighth of a teaspoon of chlorine to that, and you'll leave that in your sink for hand washing purposes. You're not going to open your spigot every time that somebody needs to wash their hands. You're going to have a tub in here with water and a little bit of chlorine and that's how everybody's going to wash their hands. And um, then you can have a second tub next to it in here with a little water that doesn't have the chlorine in it for rinsing and stuff like that to get the chlorine off your hands. But you're going to use that water all day in the kitchen. You're going to have another tub like this set up in your bathroom for washing in there. And at every place that you have water that you're using, you're going to have a small package of wet wipes. And everybody's going to wa wipe their hands with wet wipes before they use this water. That way any visible dirt, um, any solids, most of the solids will come off with the wet wipes. So wet wipes are important. When you are doing um, something that needs to be warm water, what you'll do is you'll fill your container. You'll First off, anything that was in this bowl goes into a bucket. You save your water in your bucket, and this is the water that you use to flush your toilet. You do not ever, ever, ever use your water storage for flushing a toilet. You use wastewater for flushing your toilet. So you'll save all your water in here. Everyone will go to the bathroom in the toilet, and anytime you need to flush the toilet, you'll go and pour this in, and it will flush your toilet for you. Never use potable water for flushing your toilet. And if everybody goes pee all day, you don't flush that toilet until somebody has a bowel movement. All the toilet paper goes into a garbage can next to the toilet. You do not put anything, no toilet paper goes in that toilet because you're using as little water as possible and it takes more water to, to flush solids. So if somebody has a bowel movement, that's when you use this water to flush that toilet. Until then, you're using urine <laughs> and your toilet is filling up with urine, which isn't gonna hurt anything. So if for some reason you need to have hot water, if it's a short-term emergency, nobody is taking a bath. Nobody is taking a bath. Nobody is taking a bath. You are using wet wipes to clean genitals and armpits and faces, wet wipes alone. Not a good time to be wearing makeup because you don't wanna get an eye infection from not being able to take a shower and get that makeup off all the way. So. You're filling, you, you've poured this water that was used for hand washing into your bucket, and now you have a clean bowl again. You're going to pour the same amount of water into your bowl, and then you're going to take your boiling water and pour a little bit of boiling water in. And that is how you warm it. You don't have a big pot of water over on your wood burning stove or your little tiny camp stove that you're cooking on. You want to, it, it, it wastes energy. Trying to get that much water to come to a boil is very wasteful. So, small amount of water, bring it to a boil, pour your water into the cold water till it's the temperature that you want. And if you don't have a wood-burning stove, don't be heating water. Um, unless you're worried about the, um, the quality of the water you're drinking, if you're worried it's, it's got something nasty in it, then you would need to boil your water if you don't have a water filter. Um, but again, small amounts. And the other thing is, if you have a wood stove, 
you don't want that big tub of boiling water to be on your stove because it's going to cause condensation. You're going to have a very steamy house, which is going to cause mold problems. And it and your water is going to start evaporating. You don't want your water evaporating. You want it to stay in. You want it to stay in your container so that you can drink it. So small amounts of water only for for heating purposes. So I cannot stress highly enough. I uh, have a little bit of chlorine on hand. This does turn into water eventually, so you don't want to be using chlorine that has been in your storage or your grandma's storage for 30 years because it just turns into water. Um, you need to make sure to cycle your chlorine. And always keep a box, and by a box I mean like an apple box of small single-use wet wipes on hand because they really do help with body odors and stuff. The way that I figured this out was I used to work for the government, for the state, and we went camping a lot, and uh, we didn't have water. The only water we had was for drinking water, and so we used wet wipes to make sure that we weren't stinky uh, while we were camping for, for 10 days or whatever. So wet wipes are, are a lifesaver to make it more livable around other people who are gonna be possibly in a, in a cramped environment. We're going to talk about emergency situations or even just trying to live lighter on the planet, however you want to put it, um, for females, for women. So we're going to get really specific and I'm not going to try to offend anybody, but I am going to talk very explicitly about this. So if you're sensitive and you are a female that, uh, if you're somebody who's really sensitive, just go away. <laughs> So in an emergency situation, this is something that women need to be aware of. Um, because of the moist environment of feminine areas, you need to be extremely, extremely careful with hygiene. Now, my favorite tool for that is this. I don't even know what these are called, era bottles. When you have a baby and you have a tear, this is what they give you and you fill it with water and then you use it to irrigate your genital area after you go to the bathroom. Rather than using toilet paper to wipe yourself clean, they give you an irrigation bottle. Now, this is in an emergency situation something you always want to have on hand because every time that you have your period, if um, you want to be able to walk and, and you're not able to take a shower every day because there's a limited amount of water, you can use this, you can boil water till it's very clean, you can let it cool down and you can use this to irrigate down there and get blood off of yourself. You don't want that blood down there, especially if you're prone to any kind of infection. Um, this is also good for anybody else. If, you, if anybody ever gets hurt down in that, men as well, in the genital area, this is something that could be a lifesaver to keep an area clean. Um, so, the other thing is, okay, so if you're not married, this might be a little bit of a sensitive subject for you. You might not understand this, but after you have sex, you have having sex, have good hygiene. Rinse yourself off. It is not okay to just use pads to soak that up. You need to wash yourself off. It's really, really important in an emergency situation to keep things down there clean. If everything else goes to pot, that's okay. If you are if you got BO and stuff, it's okay. If you don't wash your hair, it's okay. Wash that area after sex and when you're having your period, keep it clean. Um, and this is unrelated because I've never used a douche, um, but Nature's Cleanse is a Melaleuca product, and if you have a baby with a diaper rash, uh, take one cap of this, put it in one of these irrigation bottles with water, and then every time you change their diaper, sprinkle some of this on their little privates and their little bum, and it will heal them. Not kidding. My mom used this when I was a kid, when we ha I had so many little brothers and sisters and diaper rashes, and when she started using this, that no longer happened. If it's really bad, put your baby in the sink, one cap of this with the sink full of water if they're, if they're really red and raw, and let them soak in it for a little while and it will get rid of that diaper rash. It's amazing. I'm sorry this is really disjointed, but I feel a little uncomfortable talking about this, but I really need to get it out there. So hopefully you're picking out the pearls among the swine type of a thing. Okay, so 
The next thing I want to talk about, and hopefully we're all girls here, because I'm going to show you my cloth pads that I've actually used, so there's a little bit of staining on them. Um, so I made these from a sanitary napkin pattern, and I just use a safety pin on the underside. So I took a sanitary napkin that had wings on it, and I traced around it to make a pattern, and then I took flannel sheets, it needs to be cotton, it has to be cotton, if it's not cotton, that's not good, it won't breathe very well. So I took old flannel sheets and took some tape, some fabric tape, and sewed them just here on the edges uh, in three spots. And then I made myself some inserts that just slide right in there underneath those, some thick inserts, and that way that is my reusable sanitary napkin. And then this just folds, just like a regular sanitary napkin, folds around your panties. And then this just safety pins in place. And that way you don't have to go to the trouble of trying to get snaps on it that'll close. It just works perfectly. And the only thing I did was around the outside is a zigzag stitch to keep it from running. And that's how I did sanitary napkins. And then I have this little pot and I only use this pot for boiling my sanitary napkins that are fabric. Can you see that? I use it only for that and for soaking pads. Now, one word to the wise about cloth, nap uh, cloth sanitary napkins. If you leave them in a container and let them sit for a really, really long time, they will build up a bacteria in them that likes blood. Now, what happens the next time you put those pads on and you start to bleed. That bacteria in those pads likes blood. And so that bacteria in those pan in those napkins will start to develop and feed on the blood that's coming out of you. 